The Daily Tribune. Thoroughly disgusted with your wild extravagance. I warn you, I'll have no more of it. If necessary, I'll cancel your charge accounts. That would soon start a rumor that you were in financial difficulties. I'll handle that situation should it arise. But I demand that you respect my wishes. I, uh, I want to see Mr. Kirkland. Oh, I'm sorry, but Mr. No, Kirkland... No, listen, to... don't you worry about it. People like to be interviewed. It makes oh, them feel important. Please, can... please, you... Now, listen, did, did anyone ever tell you you're pretty? Huh? Oh, please, please don't go in there. You'll get me in trouble. Times when I think a good spanky is what you need. He's in a good humor. That's a good time to see him. Relax, relax, relax. Just... Who are you? What do you want? I'm Kenny Blake from the Daily Tribune. We understand you plan a consolidation with the Craig Jordan interest, with change of control and complete reorganization. What I plan is of no concern to the Daily Tribune. I have nothing to say for publication. Good afternoon. Yeah, but there's an unusual angle to this story, Mr. Kirkland. Think of it. You and Jordan from the same small town. You grew up together as boys. Business rivals for years. Why, that yarn's loaded with human interest. I... Yeah, plenty of human interest. I told you I have nothing to say for publication. And I'm not interested in human interest. Very popular. It increases the circulation. Now, look, uh, Mr. Kirkland, if you could just give me a brief sketch of the personal angle. Don't you understand the English language? What I plan is my own private business. I don't care to discuss it with you or anyone else. Yeah, but look, Mr. Good afternoon. Kirkland. You found your way in here. I imagine you can find your way out again. Oh, sure, that's easy. <laughs> Same way I came in. Well, thanks. Too bad. You must have had a complete pressure. Did I? What else? No story, no human interest. Well, not for publication, maybe, but I'm human and plenty interested. Perhaps you might even be interesting. Could be. Only one way to find out, for sure. So I've been told, but uh, maybe I'm not curious. What, a woman and not curious? How about you giving me an interview someday soon? Why? It's my job, interviewing people. Don't you ever think of anything but your job? Should I? Maybe. No advancement. <laughs> But I have my uh, carefree moment. Might be amusing to see what you do with a carefree moment. Might be an experience you'd never forget, too. Oh, uh, by the way, just so you don't get lost, I'm at the Daily Tribune. Yeah, I know. Why not? You could be one of the best if you'd keep your mind on the job, but you're slippy. And it's because you're getting a callus on your belly from leaning up against bars. You muffed that Kirkland assignment. All you could talk about was a pair of good-looking gams, and that's not my idea of a story. Oh, but Ward, she was a dream. She was something out of this world. Yeah, well, you'll be out of a job if you don't get wise to yourself. Look, a smart guy like me is not going to go on working for starvation wages all his life. Starvation wages are better than starvation without wages. Yeah, but who's talking about starving? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to find myself a wealthy heiress. I'm going to make her fall in love with me. I'm going to marry her, and then I'll buy this paper. 
Uh, but don't worry. You can go on working for me. Car, my moment. Well, shall we squander it or spend it carefully? Use your own judgment. All right. Am I going too fast? Not yet. You uh, asked for an interview. What do you want to know? Are you kidding? Uh huh. Hey, if you uh, if you intend to run out of gas, I'll tell you when. Okay. Nature's wonderful, isn't it? Uh, you uh, expecting someone? Yeah. What's your name? How do you like uh, Tony? I like it fine. Kenny's nice, too. How'd you know my name? I get around. <laughs> I'm glad you got around to me. <laughs> the idea of playing around with another guy's wife. Why didn't you tell me he was your husband? I took it for granted you knew I was Mrs. Kirkland. Why should you take it for granted? He's old enough to be your father, and that's the way it looked to me. I didn't think of anything except that it made me happy to be with you. And there's been very little happiness in my life since I've been married. He was very thoughtful and gentle before we were married. I thought I loved him. But he changed immediately. He became domineering and constantly nagging about money. He's a wealthy man, and yet he would scream and nag me every time I wanted to spend a dime. Why didn't you divorce him? He's too smart to give me grounds for a divorce. And he won't come through with a decent settlement. He expects me to walk out with nothing after all these years I've spent with him. And I won't do it. But money isn't everything. We don't need his doll. You say you love me. I do, Kenny. I love you with all my heart, but I'm entitled to that money, and I'll not be cheated out of it. Well, I guess you have a right to feel that way. Of course I do. And I'm not thinking of just myself. I want to share it all with you. I want us to have all the joy in the world and not just scrimp along on a salary. Accidents that happen every day. And nothing ever happens to him. Yeah, a nice fatal accident would be swell. But you can't make an accident happen where to do the most good. Why not? Well, it wouldn't be an accident then. But you could help me make it look like one. If I have crazy ideas, I feel so miserable and helpless, it drives me frantic. 
Well, there's never been anyone but you that I could talk to. Sure, I know how you feel. But believe me, murder's not the right answer. I guess you'll never really love me. Maybe we have different ideas about love. Your kind seems to have a string attached to it. A nice long string. You wouldn't even let us shove off together. Now, you, you'd better take another look through the rogues gallery. Frightful trouble, and I don't know what to do. Police? No, nothing as simple as that. Well, tell me about it. Can I have a drink first? I need it. Sure. Come on. I knew Harvey Kirkland was cold-blooded and selfish. But I never dreamed anyone could be so utterly vile. What did he do? Nothing yet. But he plans to frame me with perjured testimony. What do you mean, frame you? He's going to sue for divorce. He's hired witnesses to perjure themselves in telling a nasty story. Oh, he can't get away with that? Oh, yes, he can. He has money enough to get away with anything. And I haven't the money to fight him. They'll blacken my name and he'll be able to throw me out without a dime. He's bluffing. Oh, no, he isn't. You don't know him. He hates me. He'll gladly spend any amount of money to take a spiteful revenge, rather than give me what I'm entitled to have. Kenny, what am I going to do? Keep your chin up. We'll figure out some way to stop him. Life could be so wonderful. We'd be so happy if he was out of our way. Keep talking, baby. We'd be rich. Have all the money we could possibly want. We'd get away from here. Go to Rio or Havana. Where there's life and music and gaiety. He owns a mountain lodge. Where he likes to go once in a while. To rest and relax, so he says. When he leaves the highway, he turns off on a narrow, winding road where an accident could easily happen. And every time he makes that trip, I hope he'll go off the edge of one of those hairpin turns. Yeah. The turn of the wheel would pay off big. But you can't send a car over a bank by wishing. I know. That's just the trouble. How about another drink? I could choose one. Hello? Hey, some, uh, some girl named Tony called up. I want to see her right away. Huh? Thanks. Well, if you don't want her, I'll take her. Hey, rush this cop real fast, I'll take her. I'll send her to the park. Have you seen Kenny? He was in just now, and he went out again. Is he sober? Sober as a judge. Too sober, if you ask me. Where'd you have me come here for? That's smart. There's no one else in the house. 
Kenny, we've got to act right away. He's on his way up to the lodge and we'll not have another chance like this. He'll start the divorce suit as soon as he comes back. Are you sure you want to go through with this? Of course I do. Kenny, your plan is good and you can count on me to carry my end. We mean too much to each other. You can't let me down. I'm not going to let you down. If that's the way you want it, it's the way it's going to be. Did you invite me up here just for the pleasure of having a fight? Oh, I hope you'll be ready to show a little common sense. Is there a common sense way of submitting to highway robbery? You've been trying to maneuver me into a corner where you can steal my shirt. I've been trying to salvage something from a badly mismanaged business. And I don't feel like playing Santa Claus. You've been secretly buying up stock. So you could grab control of the merger, but you're not going to get away with it. I'll stop you if I have to break your neck. You always were a stubborn brat. About time you grew up. What do you want? Excuse me, Mr. Kirkland, but I wasn't expecting you. And I'm kind of low on provisions. Well, go down to the village and get what you want. Yes, sir. It'll take quite a while. Lizzie ain't perking like she should on the uphill pool. Harvey, I'm sorry I blew my top. Oh, forget it, Craig. We've known each other too many years. I didn't take you seriously. Look here. We won't have any difficulty at all ending up this business. Tony is certainly a beautiful woman. Tony is certainly an extravagant headache. She's made it quite clear that her chief interest in me is financial. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, don't shed any tears on my account. It doesn't bother me much anymore. I'll walk back to the ranch house and telephone. You put the car out of commission. All right, but hurry. Might I use your telephone? My car broke down. Come in. Phone's over yonder. Thank you. you know, this is just about the jumping off place. I don't see a car traveling this road once in a blue moon. Let's forget this business for a while and go fishing. I brought up some new tackle I'd like to try on. Mm -hmm. All right, there's no hurry about this. Hello? Hello, Harvey. Harvey, I'm in a horrible mess. Well, I was driving up to the lodge because I had to see you right away, and my car broke down. What do you want to see me about? I can't tell you over the phone. Won't you come down and get me? It won't take very long. Thanks, Harvey. Oh, and do be careful driving down that road. There's so many dangerous curves. Your tender concern overwhelms me. But don't worry, I've driven that road many times before. Right. What's up? Tony was coming up to see me about something or other. Money, probably. Her car broke down. I've got to go get her. Would you mind getting the car out for me, please? Not at all. Why don't you let me get her? I don't mind making the trip. Oh, no, go ahead and enjoy your fishing. I'll see you later at the lake. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
take off the story I told him when he's coming to get me. All right, get in the car. We'll meet him up the road away. Walk up the hill. Come through here. Listen. I hear a car. Get in there, quick. Fall apart. Hmm. He's gonna mess up the works if he doesn't get out of here. Who is he? I don't know. This is a private road to the lodge. No one lives up here. These things so they stay together a while. I ain't heard of this thing hardly 18 years. What are we gonna do? Sit tight. That's all we can do. We can't take a chance on being seen up here. What a filthy break. Everything was perfect till that yokel came along and started to fall apart. to meet you, and I'm afraid I've sprained my ankle. That's an asinine thing to do. Why don't you wait at the car? I know it was. Will you help me put on my shoe? Hold of yourself. Don't fold up. We've got to put him in the car. Yeah. All right. All right. Come on. Bring him in. All right. Come on. Help me push. 
Wait a minute. I find you half plastered. I ought to fire you for this. You're a sucker if you don't. I swore I'd make a newspaper man out of you, and I hate to admit that I'm licked. You call me a sucker. You're the world's champion. There's not a man or woman on this paper that has your ability, and yet you're trying your best to make a tramp out of yourself. Go on, pour it on, Ward. I got it coming. Well, never mind. Skip it for now. But you're not stupid, Kenny. You know you've got two strikes on you before you start. Now cut out this foolishness and get down to business. All right, Ward. What's the assignment? He was killed in a motor accident. He's a big shot, and the story's worth a spread. Write it up from all angles. Put a lot of human interest on it. Press. Hi, Lieutenant. How come the homicide squad's investigating an accident? That was no accident. That was murder. Well, uh, what makes you think it was murder? That car wasn't driven off the road. The ignition was off, and it wasn't in gear. A corpse doesn't bleed, so we know that Kirkland was dead when he was placed behind the wheel. That can't be. He didn't have an enemy in the world. Him and this fellow was having quite a heated quarrel before I left. He called Mr. Kirkland a crook and threatened to break his neck. Now, them ain't exactly friendly words. We had a disagreement over a business deal, but he's exaggerating the incident. I know what I heard, and I ain't exaggerating nothing. Sit down, we'll talk about that later. Suppose you explain this business deal. Well, for some time, Kirkland's tried to absorb my business in consolidation. Were you agreeable? Well, not completely. Was he in a position to use pressure? Yes, in a way, but... I had nothing to worry about. Harvey and I were friends. How about a picture gorgeous? Hmm? Oh, sure, it's a good idea. Uh, I'm sorry to bother you at a time like this, Mrs. Kirkland, but might we have a picture? Oh, certainly, I don't mind. Hold it. This puts us in an awful spot. What are we going to do? Don't be silly. Well, anything. But you can't let Jordan take the rap for us. Are you turning out to be a jellyfish? You certainly fooled me. I counted on the help of a man. Oh, I don't know. This whole thing's thrown me for a loss. I can't think straight. Then you'd better let me do your thinking for you. Look, Tony. It's one thing to kill a man and take your chances on getting caught. <sighs> Kenny, we're tied together in this. If you crack up and do something foolish, you will drag me into it. Would it make you feel better to see me in this place? Oh, I don't talk like that. Then pull yourself together, because we're heading in that direction. Oh, look, if the law makes a mistake, that isn't your responsibility. Think about us, Kenny. We have all the world and all of life ahead of us. We'll leave here as soon as I settle the estate. And we'll be so happy we'll forget all about everything that ever happened here. We've got clear sailing, Kenny. 
don't rock the boat. All right, baby. All right, anything you say. Hey, office boy. Office boy. You know, Kenny, I can't get that Jordan trial out of my mind. When a thing bothers me, I've got to do something about it. Or should it bother you? Because I've got a hunch that Jordan is not guilty. Oh, I know. The only fingerprints found on the car belong to Jordan and to Kirkland. The caretaker testified that there was not another soul in the district, and he passed no one on the road. Mrs. Kirkland wasn't in her car when he drove by, but she claimed she was over at the ranch house telephoning. <coughs> We've got no time check to disprove her story. Besides, it's not the kind of a job that a woman could do by herself. It looked like they had an airtight case against Jordan. And they convicted him. They did not establish sufficient motive for the murder. Why, well, I've said a lot of times I'd like to break your neck. But that didn't mean that I had any intention of doing it. I bet you're only kidding. It's a load off my mind. I'll bet my shirt that there's a motive for this Kirkland murder that hasn't been uncovered. And if or when it is, then you'll have your real murderer. Boy, would that be a story. Living or dead, I'll not be jipped out of that money with the will leaving the bulk of his estate to charity. I earned every dime of it by putting up with him as long as I did, and I'm going to have it. I'll break that will. Baby, you get a third. The law guarantees you that. Why don't you take it and be satisfied? Are you crazy? The less I'm mixed up with the law, the better I like it. Something might backfire. I can't understand anyone being so eager to toss off a fortune. Tony. You always hit the wire first with me. The money came in a very poor set. It's beginning to look like it was the other way around with you. Well, I'm not going to be cheated out on something that belongs to me, but I'm afraid to fight for it. Did say there was no one else around that day, but I saw a stranger drive down the road quite a while after Mrs. Kirkland telephoned. Do you think you'd recognize him if you saw him again? I don't know. I might if I saw him in the car. I recognize the car. Did you see Mrs. Kirkland again? Yes, yeah, she come back to phone her husband again. A uh, short time after that fella drove down the road, but she didn't get no answer that time. She was pretty mad about her husband not coming together, and she called up a garage in the village to send someone out to fix her car. She seemed in an awful hurry to get away. Said she'd better wait in her car. Maybe she didn't think I was... Good enough to visit them. Hello, Kenny. Hello, Warren. What's on your mind? Plenty. Sit down. Thanks. Hmm. Perfume. Since when did you get interested in women? Isn't everybody? I suppose so. You know, Kenny, I've got a hunch that I can smoke out a story on this Kirk murder. And I kind of like to have somebody to talk it over with, so I... Well, it helps me fit the pieces together. Y yeah. Sure. Well, go ahead and bounce your ideas off me. Well, I've been trying to dig up all I could about Mrs. Kirkland before she was married. And if she wasn't a gold digger, she was a reasonable facsimile. Now, maybe she was in love with Kirkland, and maybe she wasn't. Maybe she went overboard for some guy closer to her own age, and then became impatient to cash in on the Kirkland marriage. That story would fit in nicely with the mysterious stranger who was seen in the locality on the day that Kirkland was murdered. Mysterious stranger? Mm-hmm. Where'd you dream that one up? I didn't dream it up. He was seen driving down the road, and I'll bet he could be identified if I could find him. And I'd be very much interested to know what he was doing there at that time. That would give me a believable motive for murder. And then, too, I'd like to probe into Mrs. Kirkland's romance, if any. Ford, <laughs> with your imagination, you ought to be doing a comic strip. Yeah, but I'd do all right at that. You know, when I get a hunch, I put my imagination to work on all angles, and then I want to see which one will pan out. Yeah? 
Well, when I turn in the story, it's got to be facts, <laughs> not imagination. Has all this heavy thinking uh, given you a thirst? How about a shot? No, not now, thanks. Yeah, well, you don't mind if I have one. No, go ahead. You know, one's okay. Two, not so good. Three, could be bad. I'll engrave those words of wisdom on the bottle. They do you more good than the caption 100 proof. Now, assuming that Tony Kirkland is mixed up in this murder, she'd need help. And that mysterious stranger fits perfectly into the picture. If I could only put my finger on him, or some clue that would lead me to him, I'm sorry to revive unhappy memories, Mrs. Kirkland, but uh, I was sure that you'd be willing to assist in any way that you can. Naturally, won't you sit down? Thank you. That perfume smells familiar. Oh, that's quite possible. Anyone can buy it if they feel that extravagant. I can't recall why it should seem familiar, but I don't suppose it's worth bothering about, is it? How do you think I can be of assistance? Oh, I'm sorry. I allowed my thoughts to ramble. I believe you said uh, that you waited in your car all the time, except when you went to telephone. That's right. Can you tell me who passed along the road while you were waiting in your car? Well, the road was deserted. No one passed by. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Do you believe that Craig Jordan deserves to die? The law found him guilty of murder. Why should I question the verdict? Oh, it was just a passing thought. Well, thank you very much. Oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't tell you anything. You've told me all that I wanted to know. Good afternoon. Oh, uh, Mr. McKee. Yes? I uh, may be stupid, but uh, I can't understand the reason for your visit. Well, a story is the breath of life to a newspaper man. He can't pass up any possibility. Oh, I see. Why did you expect to find a story here, Mr. McKee? I always expect to find a story any place. You see, I get a hunch once in a while about something and it uh, gives the boys quite a laugh, but I like to snoop around and see if it amounts to anything. Well, good afternoon, Mrs. Kirkland. Good afternoon. doing here? Let's go in the library. What did the key want? He asked me if I saw anyone else on the road that day. I told him I didn't. Well, he knows you lied. The woman at the ranch house saw me, and he's got a pretty good idea as to why you lied. Even so, it won't get him anywhere. Tony, I... I'm afraid of my key. You don't know that guy. When he once sells himself an idea, he won't give up on it until he's proved it one way or the other. He can't prove anything. If we sit tight and keep our mouths shut. Maybe you're sorry you ever had the misfortune to meet me. You don't mean that. You know I'm crazy about you. But can't you see we're running the risk of losing everything by trying to grab too much? Maybe we're playing with dynamite. If McKee should ever find out about you and me, he'd put two and two together and we wouldn't like the answer. Don't be silly. McKee is not Superman. And we're playing for a fortune. Not me, baby. What I did, I did for you. Not for some other guy's dough. You sold me a beautiful idea about life and love and gaiety. All right, let's go where we can have some of that. Who's that? How do I know? I'm Alan Webb. Mrs. Kirkland is expecting me. Just a moment. Calling. Oh, ask him to come in. Yes, ma'am. This way, please. I'm sorry if I'm intruding. Oh, not at all. Uh, Mr. Blake, Mr. Webb. Mr. Blake is a newspaper man. I'm very glad to meet you. How do you do? Good publicity. Never heard a case. What do you mean, case? I'm representing Mrs. Kirkland in her effort to abrogate the injustice of her late husband's will. Oh, I see. 
Thanks for the interview, Mrs. Kirkland. I'll be going now. Excuse me. Kenny. You're going through with it, are you? I am. Well, I think you're making a mistake, and I hope I'm wrong. Thank you. In the effort to have a will set aside, there are two means of attack. First, that the testator was subject to undue influence. Or second, that he was of unsound mind at the time of the execution of the will. Yes. I would say that uh, unappreciation of you would be evidence of an unsound mind. Oh, well, that's very sweet of you to say so. Is that your personal or legal opinion? Both. But I doubt if we'll have much trouble, if the court sees the argument from my point of view. Well, I'm sure you know how to present an argument to make it most effective. Your taste in art seems somewhat on the morbid side. Working around the newspapers enough to make anybody morbid, isn't it? Uh, I think you've got something there. Hey, is there a fellow around here named McKee? Could be, who are you? Well, that's not important. I've got some information I think you'd like to have. Well, McKee is a very busy man. I'd suggest that you write a letter asking for an appointment. Oh, I ain't gonna write no letters to nobody. Now, look here, young feller. I drove all the way down here to talk to him, and it's a long way. And Lizzie almost coughed up a cylinder. Uh, I'll take over. What information are you talking about? Are you McKee? No. Then what are you asking so many questions for? You better give me your story. I'll take it to McKee. If it's got news value, I guarantee you'll be paid for it. No, I ain't gonna talk to nobody but McKee. Well, then I'm afraid you're not gonna talk to anybody. McKee hasn't got time to see everybody who barges in. Well, if that's the case, I guess I'd better go. Oh, Mr. McKee, what about these papers? Take them over here to Jackson. Is your name McKee? That's right. Well, I've got some information that'll knock your eye out. Yeah? What about the Kirkland murder case? Who are you? I'm the caretaker at the Kirkland place. Oh, you come in my office. Kenny, come on in. This may turn out to be a story for you to work on. Sit down. All right. Let's have it. Well, if you remember, I swore in court there was nobody but Mr. Jordan back in the mountains the day Mr. Kirkland was killed. Yes, I remember. Well, I was mistook. I was talking to Mrs. Harper the other day. Her and her husband live on that ranch just off the highway. She told me about you being there and about telling you about a stranger she saw driving down the road. Well, sir, I got to figure that somebody was lying. And I knowed I wasn't deliberately lying, so I'd done a little scouting around. And what do you think I found? What did you find? Well, sir, I found tire tracks where a car had been driven off the road and hid in the bushes, right close to where Lizzie started shedding that day. And I'll bet you they was a sitting right there all the time I was fixing her. What do you say they? Why, because I found footprints. Of course, it wasn't very plain anymore, but there was plain enough for me to see that there was a man and a woman. We're closing in. I'll pin that murder on her and her boyfriend. And what a story that'll make. Now, yeah, you can take a bow on this one. Yeah, for when you get it. Of course I'll get it. it. It's wide open. All I've got to do is fill in a few details. Nice going. I'll see that you're well paid for your trouble. Oh, ain't necessary. <laughs> but I'd be happy if you did. Hey, that fellow there tried to keep me from talking to you. Why? Well, he, uh... He wouldn't tell me what he wanted. I thought he was some kind of a crackpot. Oh, sure. I see what you mean. Look, will you show us where that place is? Sure. I'd be glad to. All right, you go wind up Lizzie and get going. We'll meet you on the mountain road. I'll need a head start. Lizzie ain't perking like she used to. All right, Kenny, you better come along with me. And we better take your car. Get a photographer because we might want some pictures. And be ready to leave in half an hour. 
I've never been wrong in my life when I followed a hunch. And this one is running true to form. Yeah, Hunch McKee, the wizard of the press. That'll make you take out a clairvoyance license. Yeah, sure. Tell me that. I'm sorry. I only make the connection. I do not furnish the other party. Nice to get out in the country. I thought you'd rather come out here for a business conference. It was a wonderful idea. We'll stop at Little Roadhouse, I know. It's a quaint little place. I'm sure you'll like it. Mm, I'm sure I will. You know, I always thought attorneys were so um, cold-blooded. That depends on the case. And also, the quiet. <laughs> I see. Where's Kenny Blake? I told him to be ready to start in half an hour. I don't know. Well, call up Joe's bar and see if he's there, will you? All right. Well, what happened to you? I, uh, I guess I can't go with you. I tripped and fell on the stairs. No liquor. I, uh, afraid I sprained my wrist. Well, that's too bad, Kenny. You go ahead and see the doc and get it fixed up. I'll take Pete along with me. Well, those are the breaks. That accident may have cost you the chance to be in on a whale of a big story. I'll tell you all about it when I get back. Mr. Blake is on the phone. Tell him I'm not in. Just a moment. I'll see if she's in. Mr. Blake is on the telephone. I'm not in. Yes, ma'am. Mrs. Kirkland is not at home. How's the wrist? Wrist? Oh, uh, it, it's okay. That's good. Something on your mind again? Yeah. I seem to be headed up a blind alley. Now, I know that Tony and some man lay in wait for Kirkland and murdered him. Then they put him in the car and shoved him over the cliff. But I can't get to first base until I find out who the guy is. And she won't lead me to it. She's playing around with some lawyer named Webb. Seems to be crazy about him, but he's not the man I want. I verified he was in court the day of the murder. A perfect alibi. Are you... are you sure about this guy, Webb? Of course I'm sure. I've got a private detective's report on her. And believe me, it's nothing she can be proud of. That's... that's a sweet payoff for the guy who committed the murder, isn't it? Well, what could he expect? Anyone who'd go for a phony like her can't be very bright. I found some footprints in pretty good shape. Had plaster casts made of them. But I can't spring that until I find the guy that made the footprints. And I haven't much time. Unless the governor grants a reprieve, Craig Jordan may be executed before I can break the story. And Kenny, an innocent man is going to die. Even in the darkest hour of human existence, there is always at hand an unfailing source of comfort to any who are willing to accept it. Man can be in no extremity where the tender mercy of our Lord cannot reach him. It's justice, not mercy, I need. I'm not a murderer. 
Harvey Kirkland is my friend, and I did not kill him. The man who killed Harvey will be guilty of two murders if he allows me to die in his place. You can pray for him. He'll need your prayers more than I. speaking. Subject in the same escort had just left the silver slipper. Okay. Go to bed. Get you that agreement before I forget it. Have that wait until tomorrow, dear. All right, darling. Alan, couldn't you hurry with that stupid legal business so that I could get my money? I know, sweet. I'm as impatient as you, but the law must take its slow and ponderous course. There's no way of hurrying it. Life's so wonderful, Alan. With all the money we could possibly want, we'll be able to go anywhere, do anything we like. You and I together, where there's life and music and gaiety. That line sounds familiar, Tony. Kenny! If he told me what you were, he was wrong. You're worse. You're crazy, you're drunk. Get out of here! You broke into the house, and I'm perfectly justified in killing you in self-defense. You've raised murder to a high degree of efficiency. Tony, nothing can stop me from doing what I came here to do. something I had to do. No, Kenny, you can't. 
Why not? You're not set to live. Jenny, I didn't know what I was doing. I was terrified you'd get me into trouble with the law. But I've always loved you. You have a funny way of showing it. I'll prove it to you any way you want me to. I'll go wherever you say. Anything you want. I thought you were the most wonderful thing in the world. I loved you. I still do, and that's my tough one. But if I let you get away with this now, go on doing it all the rest of your life. Even if they tried you for murder, you'd find some fool on the jury who wouldn't convict you. Oh, Mr. Blake, did you drop too much you've been taking again? It's far better off you'd be if your arm didn't bend at the elbow. You could be right, Maggie. I know I'm right. It's myself that buried a husband in a drunkard's grave, and a finer man you'd never hope to know when he left the creature alone. Page spread this time. You know, Maggie, it's funny how murder slips up on a person. It is that. I could murder in cold blood the blackguard who chews tobacco around here and is no judge of distance. It's all in the day's work. And I went after an interview with Harvey Kirkland. But it did seem like I picked a bad time. Hello, McKee. What do you want? What's happened here? <laughs> Plenty. You smell a story almost before it happens, don't you? Well, go ahead in. Lieutenant Edwards of the homicide squad's in there. Thanks, man. You tell me. Looks like murder and suicide or double murder. I don't know yet for sure. 
Why, it's Tony Kirkland. That's right. How come you're Johnny on the spot? Were you expecting something like this? I was following up a hunch, that's all. It looks like I was right. Too late to do any good. Who's this? His name's Alan Webb. That's all I know so far. Following a hunch is a very thin excuse for you coming here. How come clean now? What do you know about this? I was following a hunch, that's all. I believe that this ties in with the murder of Harvey Kirkland. And that there's a story here that would save Craig Jordan. If they could talk. I was on that Jordan case and there was plenty of evidence to prove him guilty. Yeah, I know. You had everything except a motive. And no murder was ever planned without a whale of a strong motive. Lieutenant, take a look at this. I sit on a bench out there and stuck my hand in a puddle of blood. Over there. Neither that pair and I could have made it from here. This blood must have been spilled by a third party. I don't need a Ward McKee hunch to show me the pattern of this. Take two men, one woman and a gun, stir them well and you got a murder. Happens every time. It could still tie in with the murder of Harvey Kirkland. Could tie in with the war. But I don't believe it does. I'll send out a general alarm to pick up a wounded man. Come on, Mac. Here it is, Kenny. You lost it. Yeah. I remember. Thanks. Oh, boy. That's 30 for tonight. I had a hunch this was it, Kenny. But I couldn't prove anything. I had to have a confession. It's all right, Ward. If I'd been really smart, I'd have known it had to end this way. It had to be. Get me the emergency hospital.